2019, Congress passed the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act, which stated 4,742 people, predominantly African Americans, were reported lynched in the United States between 1882 and 1968. According to the act, 99% of all those who committed lynching went unpunished by state and local officials. It also stated that the lynching prompted African Americans to form the NAACP. Lynching marginalized, silenced, and killed African Americans all over the country after the Emancipation Proclamation and during Reconstruction. It was systematic, a tactic to maintain white superiority and a product of an unjust social order that saw blacks as peripheral and inferior. While lynchings took the life of many black folk, it also terrorized those that survived, saw, and were left behind. The state and federal law ignored the massacre taking place across the land. It was not about killing an alleged criminal. Although many were lynched without being accused of a crime, it was about terrorizing the entire black community and enforcing Jim Crow laws. August 22, 1935, deep in the woods of Sandy Ridge, Alabama, that evening, my great-great-uncle, James Jim Press Merriweather, organizer and leader of the Sharecrop Union in Lowndes County, Alabama, was hunted, beaten, shot a hundred times, and lynched at the age of only 27. His wife, Annie Mae Merriweather, was beat possibly raped and lynched, but was released and survived to tell the story. I'm 27 years old. All my life I lived and worked in Lowndes County. And my mother and father before have done the same. I have a little girl, Coralie. She's seven years old. She goes out in the fields and helps me pick cotton. Uh, uh, according to um, Granny's niece, she said that um, that wasn't his, that wasn't his uh, daughter. The one he had by um, Annie Mae. They said, no, they didn't have kids. That's what she told me. She said she met Annie Mae when she was younger. She said it wasn't his. He had a, they had a daughter, but it wasn't his, his daughter. So I, I don't think he had any kids. My relation to my great, great uncle is paternal. He was my father's grandmother's brother. He was my grandfather's mother's brother. He was my great-grandmother's brother. As I heard the story of my ancestor being lynched most of my life, I often wondered why he was lynched. I wanted to get to the bottom of what actually happened to my great-great-uncle. And then, as I began to research further and further, I realized just how many stories were in circulation of what actually happened to him. Stories in my family also circulated and varied in details and reason as well. But only one family member, my father's first cousin, was willing to tell her version of the story. What's up, YouTube? Holla at your girl, Cookster. I'm back on my genealogy thing. I received a picture. Uh, somebody hit me up on YouTube. And uh, it's about my um, my granny, sister-in-law, Annie Mae Merriweather. All you got to do is Google her. And here's a picture of her and uh, Joseph Gelders. Uh, he's a professor at the University of Alabama. Uh, he taught physics. He was helping out, you know, with the uh, sharecroppers, the struggle they've been in and everything like that. What exactly happened? Because I've read different stories in the articles and um and then i've heard i know it was not true but that he got killed over a chicken 
but I know it's not. Uh, I never heard that one. I just heard what, what my dad told me. See, every, everybody hears different versions from whatever relative told him that. That's the first time I heard about that one when Tish told me on at the family reunion, but I never heard that one ever. He was a fine boy and a good union man. A newspaper article from that time spread a lie that he allegedly shot a 16-year-old African-American girl named Sarah Perdue, a cook on a nearby plantation where the strike first started. The posse members said they were taking Jim Press Merriweather to jail in a car and stopped at a farmhouse to get a drink of water because they had been searching for him all day long in the woods and were parched. They told the sheriff that he had gotten away from them at that point. He then went to a ditch where he had a shotgun hid and fired at them from the ditch. They said they then killed him in self-defense. The shotgun and five shells were turned over to the sheriff. But the article failed to mention his lynching. I wonder, did he actually shoot back? Did he actually shoot? After they killed Jim, they shot him because he was shooting back and hiding from them. He was hiding from them in the woods or something. Then somebody snitched and told, supposedly. They found him. They, he had a shootout with him. Yeah. yeah so, you know, they were shooting at him. He was shooting back. So, he, I guess he, he, had, no, he had no fear of him. He, he was, was shooting nice. back? Yeah, he was shooting back. They were shooting at him. I guess he probably said, you ain't going to do me any kind of way. <laughs> he, wasn't gonna, he wasn't surrendering. He wasn't going to surrender. Yeah. You know? I guess he probably said, I'll just go out like that then. But they said after they kill him, they brought him back to granddaddy, I guess, Albert Merriweather. Down in our part of Alabama, they don't do in scrack like they do in the big city. They don't get out soldiers, uh, police, uh, anything like that. The landlord and their friends, they rather do their dirty work themselves. The sheriff and his goons came to the house looking for Jim because they found out um, he was passing out leaflets, her, him, his wife, tell him have secret, it was having secret meetings and stuff. And then they found out and then they came looking for him. During the height of the Great Depression, while the country was in an economic crisis, conditions for sharecroppers had reached an all time low. They didn't have clothes or enough food to eat and they had no money. They worked 40 hours and their strike desires were to be paid at least a dollar a day. You just get an ordinary piece of paper, like you tear off from anything. And that's what you trade with. All you can get is what's marked on the paper. For a week's worth, you get $2 and a sack of flour. 24 pounds costs one fifteen. Nobody ever gets no cash. The Sharecroppers Union was a communist organization formed to organize agricultural workers in the South. My uncle joined the Sharecroppers Union and eventually became a leader of the Calhoun branch. His wife, Annie, became a leader of the Women's Branch, or the Auxiliary. My husband, Jim Press Merriweather, worked for C.C. Riles. His monthly wage was one bushel of cornmeal, two gallons of syrup, and four dollars in money. Riles claimed that Jimmy owed him three dollars, so Jimmy wouldn't leave. Jim wanted to quit Riles last May, but he knew he would be beaten, and the sheriff would bring him back. My uncle, like other sharecroppers, were not free. Slavery was supposed to have been abolished, but received a new name, sharecropping. Since August 19th, through the most vicious terror landlords could unleash, the strikers have held their ranks solid. Such determination can only be turned and born from dire poverty, starvation, and oppression. With much research from credible historical references and credible literature, I now know exactly what happened to my uncle. Several books have given me this insight, and I was able to combine the stories from books like Living Jim Crow, Bloody Lounge, Hammer and Ho, Annie Mae Merriweather's account in, in both a sworn affidavit and an article published by the Labor Party. The Equal Justice Initiative also has an accurate account of what happened to my great-great-uncle. And this is how it went. The Sharecroppers Union all agreed the best thing to do was strike. That's how it all started. The cotton picker strike began on August 19, 1935, on Monday, the first day of the work week. That same day, Jim Press and his wife were evicted from their home where they worked and lived. 
They went to stay with her sister after hearing about the lynch mob, beginning to look for anyone associated with the SCU. Sleep is torture with the nightmares of lynching, terror, and murder. Food settles in lumps in your stomach, but the struggle must go on. The attack of the lynchers must be answered. Thursday morning, Jim Press went back home to get some groceries. On his way back, he stopped to his sister's house. As he stepped in the door, John Frank Bates of Fort Deposit shot him down. After shooting my husband down, they asked him a lot of questions about who was the leaders in the union. Jim Press wouldn't tell him anything. Four days into the cotton picker strike, that Thursday, the 22nd, Jim Press Merriweather was hunted, beaten until he was unconscious, questioned about the union, shot a hundred times, and then lynched by a posse of white plantation owners, but led by the sheriff, Robert Woodruff. If the sheriff led the posse that lynched him for fighting for higher wages and leading a strike, the law and order is out the window. The sheriff is the one who led the posse of white plantation owners. They also found Annie May. Von Riles started doubling the rope and said, lay across the chair. I want naked meat this morning. This part of Annie's testimony was later put in a song called Union Made by Woody Guthrie. This bloody crime was done. Then they drew me up about two feet from the floor. They had tied ropes and knots, according to the article, and they, they had beat her because they believed she was lying about where Jim was hiding at. And um, they, they tried to hang her, but that didn't work, and she passed out, and then she came to. And they said, if you lie some more, we're going to come back looking for you. That's when they left the house looking for him. She wasn't able to say any last words or even see Jim Press before he was killed. They had my husband hid. I paused right where he was, but I didn't know he was there. Then I heard guns fire about 75 to 100 times. And when I got to where they were, they told me about my husband being shot. They were lynching him then. I ain't seen his body. I know what happened to him, though. Why would you shoot a man a hundred times? Why would you lynch someone if he's already dead? They treated his lead-filled body like a trophy for other races and a warning for others looking to rebel. The white man, my husband's father, Albert Merriweather, worked for all his days. He tried to save him. He had gone to town the night of the lynching. He tried to stop him, but they yelled him down and he went on his way. They tried to return his lifeless body to my family the next day, but one of my ancestors told them, you killed him, you bury him. His body was then thrown in a swamp. They said after they killed him, they brought him back to granddad, I guess Albert Merriweather, and said, here, like that. And he said, and if he saw Jim dead and everything, shot a bullet. They said, he said, y'all killed him, y'all bury him. So they took him back, they dragged Jim back, and they went off. And that was the last time he seen Jim. They probably threw him in a swamp or something like that. I don't know, because they was asking me down at the Equal Justice. They interviewed me, asked me why you think he, your grand, great, your grand, your great granddad did that. I was like, I said, I don't know. Uh, I was like, wow, why would he, I'm like, why would he do that? You know, at least you know where he at, you know what I mean? But, you know, back in them days. These landlords' fields are heavy with cotton that's been ready to pick for three weeks. Eventually, sharecroppers were back to work for the same price as they had been working for. The sheriff told the reporter, 
from that time that normal work had returned and pay had not been raised by October 1935. One thing is very clear still. Jim Press Merriweather was a martyr. His cause of death was racism by brutal method of lynching and bullets. The white lynch mob that killed him wanted to use him as an example to not rebel. But he was an example for many to keep fighting. We must blame the system. The system that allowed him to be paid unlivable wages. The system that allowed him to starve. Not have clothing like all the rest of the sharecroppers from that time. The system that got upset when he fought and led others for higher pay. The system that turned a blind eye and never served justice. Later on in 1935, Annie Mae Mayweather went to Washington, D.C. with representatives from the Sharecroppers Union to file protests with the FDR administration. They later agreed to investigate, but no prosecution or indictments ever occurred in Lowndes County. After the blood of African Americans were shed that week, public protests against unfair wages were silenced. It became impossible and life-threatening to challenge the oppressive system and white supremacy that Bloody Lounge County was. So, how can justice be served? The Equal Justice Initiative has a museum in Montgomery, Alabama with soil from where African Americans were lynched. The soil where my great-great-uncle Jim Press Merriweather was murdered is also in a jar marked with his name and date of death in that museum. My cousin has a small jar of it. They gave us small ones. You see it? Yeah, wow. That says his name on it, too? Yeah. It says, Jim Press Merriweather, Sandy Ridge, Alabama, August 22nd, 22nd, 1935. And this is around, this is the dirt, supposedly where the area he supposed to got killed at. They just got like that. Got press on here. Oh, this thing turned. But the, the big jar I took on the internet, I mean, yeah, on um, Facebook, they got it in the museum, and it's all set. Everybody that got lynched, killed, they got, they got a big giant plaque. You can Google it. His name is etched onto the memorial for lynchings there as well. Justice will continue when stories like my great great uncles are told and told again, not forgotten, or just become a mystical fairy tale of southern lynchings. These lynchings are still connected to us very much so. Whether through bloodline like my ancestor or on the soil we step on, history must not be erased, but embraced so that it is never to happen again. Pass it on this information from generation to generation. We originated from Lowndes County and this is where it all started. So I just want everybody to know this is keep on remembering and stand tall because our ancestors guided us and never forget that's the most important we never forget history despite its wrenching pain cannot be unlived but if faced with courage need not be lived again Maya Angelou these pictures are of the real anime Merriweather her beautiful smile, her brown skin, her big eyes, but that sad look. This picture sold for $30,000 in 2019. And this one sold for 20,000 in 2019 in the same exact auction. But yet, Jim Press Merriweather, his wife Annie Mae Merriweather, and the Sharecroppers Union of Alabama fought to be paid dollar a day.